we have seen now how to convert a partial differential equation into a set of algebraic equations into a w equal to b type of matrix uh, equation. In the particular case that we have looked at, we have a matrix uh, uh, with constant coefficients. It is not generally the case, but this is what we have. Now, what we look at is how to solve this. Before we attempt a solution, we want to see whether this is, uh, this is going to give us a unique solution. Do we have enough number of equations and are these equations independent? Do we have a matrix equation which is irreducible in the sense that there are, how do we know that some of these equations are not linear combinations of other equations? So, that is the kind of question that we must uh, ask ourselves. So, one normal way to look at that is to find out the determinant of uh, A. But in a case like this, there are other thumb rules and other conditions. Some of them are sufficient, some of them are necessary conditions, which can help us just by looking at it, whether or not we can get a unique solution. One such condition uh, is the condition of diagonal dominance. Okay, so, we would like to use the condition of diagonal dominance. to check whether we have the possibility of getting a unique solution. Okay, so, what do we mean by diagonal dominance? We have 9 equations and each of them is of uh, uh, this particular form. Uh, okay, so, where each of them is uh, for example, minus 1000 times uh, W22 plus 100 times W332 plus 400 times W23 equal to 0. Uh, like this. So, the, when you have this set of uh, uh, this type of equations, we can uh, uh, define diagonal dominance as a condition where the modulus of the diagonal term that is in, in this matrix, these are all the diagonal terms. Okay, so, you have one term the diagonal term is greater than or equal to the sum of all modulus of all other terms that is i not equal to j. So, this must be satisfied for each i. So, once we have this condition satisfied, we can claim diagonal dominance. So, if we have diagonal dominance, then we can say okay, we have that is one possibility, a possible way of verifying that we have a unique uh, 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 set of equations and we can uh, uh, get, we, we can uh, uh, make use of some efficient methods for the solution here. So, we have uh, Okay, we'll we'll I'll we'll have to edit uh, somewhat here. So, in order to in order to see how to proceed with the uh, solution of this, we'll look at the condition of diagonal dominance, and the diagonal dominance can be expressed in in this form where the magnitude or the absolute value of the diagonal is equal to or greater than the sum of all the off diagonal elements in the same uh, equation or in the same row. And when this is satisfied with, with uh, greater than symbol in all cases, that is known as the strong form of diagonal dominance. there is also a weak form of diagonal dominance.
which is that the modulus of the diagonal term is greater than or equal to the sum of the modulus values okay the magnitudes of all the other uh, off diagonal terms okay for all i that is for all equations and the modulus of the diagonal term is greater than the sum of the di uh, of the modulus values of the of diagonal terms at least for one equation okay so we have here nine equations if for all these nine equations this condition is satisfied then we say we we have strong form of diagonal dominance but if for all of these this condition is satisfied with either greater than or equal to sign but there is at least one row for which this condition is satisfied with the greater than sign then we say that we have a weak form of diagonal dominance okay so let us now try to see what this diagonal dominance is that if you look at the first row here this represents one equation and that equation algebraic equation is for w22 and in that equation the diagonal term is 1000 the magnitude is 1000 and the other off diagonal terms are 100 and 400 so that is the sum of these two is 500 and this is 1000 so this condition is satisfied for this equation if you come to this the diagonal term is 1000 magnitude uh, is 1000 this is 100 plus 100 200 600 totally 600 so this also satisfying uh, this condition here here is again 1000 and the sum is 500 so again this condition is satisfied here it is 400 500 900 and this is 1000 so again this is satisfied for this equation here 400 500 600 1000 and this is 1000 so this equation is not satisfied for this row okay but for all the other rows this equation is satisfied so that means that this matrix here is not does not satisfy the condition of strong form of diagonal dominance but if you look at the weak form then even this equation satisfies this uh, uh, this condition because in this case it is equal to so it is for this equation the diagonal dominance uh, condition is not satisfied in uh, the strong form but it is satisfied in the weak form and for all the other equations it is satisfying the uh, this this uh, uh, strong form of uh, okay with a with a greater than sign so that means that our we can claim that the weak form of diagonal dominance condition is satisfied by the set of a w equal to b that we have okay so now when you have this kind of condition satisfied the weak form is satisfied this often arises in uh, in uh, uh, equations that we encounter in uh, uh, cfd uh, but not all the cases but this is a very desirable form because when you have this condition satisfied uh, a number of uh, special techniques can be used to solve these equations uh, a w equal to b type of equations and we make use of one such method known as gauss seidel method for the solution of uh, uh, these equations so this is an iterative method okay so that means that we are not solving a w equal to b 
So, this is put in the form of m w equal to n w plus b and this is actually solved as m w k plus 1 equal to n w k plus b. Okay. Now, what this means is that k is known as the iteration number. So, we start with some initial guess. So, that is k values of all the w's are known and then we substitute this in this and from this we can get the k plus 1 value here. And once we get the k plus 1 value then we go back and put that here and then we again get an update thing. So, we start with k equal to 0 using this equation we get k equal to 1 and then we put k equal to 1 here we get k equal to 2 put that into this we get k equal to 3 and then we can keep on going like this until we get a converged solution. We will get a converged solution if we have the weak form of diagonal dominance for the condition A okay, for the matrix A. If we have a coefficient matrix which satisfies the weak form of diagonal dominance this Gaussian iterative method will converge no matter what the initial guess is. Okay. So, when we are solving large sets of equations when we are solving uh, with lots and lots of grid points then this becomes uh, an, uh, a very good method and we will discuss this more in uh, uh, later uh, uh, weeks. Right now we take it for granted that this is a method that we can use to solve these things and since our condition uh, uh, our coefficient matrix A satisfies the weak form of diagonal dominance this would be a good way of uh, uh, good method for the solution of these equations. Now, how do we actually do this? So, what we are actually doing is that we take each equation here and then we put the uh, we start with this the first equation this is minus 1000 w 2 2 plus 100 w 3 2 plus 400 w so that is this is 2 3 uh, wait wait we have 3 2 3 4 and 2 3 yes. So, this is 3 2 and 2 3 equal to minus 1000 okay. So, we can in this equation the diagonal term is always kept on the uh, left hand side and uh, so this is what we are looking for we can rewrite this equation as minus 1000 w 2 2 equal to minus 1000 minus 100 w 3 2 minus 400 w 2 3. Okay. So, now here we can put this as an iterative formula w 2 2 k plus 1 equal to minus 1000 minus 100 w 3 2 k minus 400 w 2 3 k. So, if we know the initial conditions initial values for this then we can get this. Okay. So, we need to do this for each of the equations. So, in each equation the diagonal term is put on the left hand side. So, we have from the first row we have this and from the second row we have minus 1000 w 3 2 k k plus 1 equal to minus 1000 and then we take the other one this is minus 100 w 2 2 and then we have minus 100 w 4 2 and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minus 400 w 3, 3. Now, here this is 3 2 k plus 1, 2 2 value is already known from here because we solve this and then we come to this. So, we can put this as k plus 1 and at this time we have not yet solved for uh, 4 2. So, we put this as k and k and we come to the third equation here it is w 4 4 2. 
so minus 1000 4 to k plus 1 equal to minus 1000 minus 100 uh, 2 2 2 2 value is already known k plus 1 uh, so this is not 2 2 so this is uh, uh, 3 2 so this is 3 2 is already known anyway and then we have 400 4 3 and then we can write this as the next equation is for W 2 3 so in this equation we come here so this is minus 400 W 2 2 K plus 1 and this is uh, W three three minus one hundred W three three K because that is not yet calculated, and then we have this one here, which is W two four. Okay. So, in this way we, we write down all the 9 equations and once we write down all the uh, 9 equations we can get a sequential solution. So, that is we start with guess values for all the variables and the guess values can be anything they can be 0 they can all be the same or they can be any value if you go through enough number of steps then it will converge provided we have the weak form of diagonal dominance or even the strong form of diagonal dominance. So, we re rewrite the 9 equations that we have here in this particular form and then we start with some initial guess values and using the guess values of W 3 2 and W 2 k we use this to get W 2 at the first iteration and then we come here we evaluate W 3 2 at the first iteration W 4 2 at the first iteration 2 3 like this all the way up to the uh, last uh, equation here. So, we will be completing one sweep through all the 9 points. So, starting with some 0 values, 0 iteration values, initial guess values, we will be getting the first set of values for all the 9. We substitute the first set of values on the right hand side, we get the second set of values and then we put them in the second set and then we get third set like that. If we keep on doing it, we find that gradually the numbers converge. So, something like that, uh, like this can be done should be done will have to be done on a computer. So, we look at some uh, uh, solutions on the computer generated using the gauss seidel method for this particular equation. Okay, now, we, we have on the screen we have the highlighted in yellow portion here which contains all the 9 equations which have been uh, uh, put up. We will just stop. I need to get one more. Can I start? Start. So, we now have uh, the set of 9 equations which we had them as uh, a w equal to b. Now, rewritten on the screen in the form of a gauss seidel method. Let us just go through the 9 equations. We have equations for W 2 2 3 2 4 2 2 3 3 3 4 3 2 4 3 4 4 4 and this is the order in, in which we solve sequentially and these each equation is written in the form of W 2 2 k plus 1. So, that is the updated value of W 2 2 is given in terms of uh, 1000 plus 100 times W 3 2 k the old value of W 3 2 plus old value of W 2 3 and this whole thing divided by 1000. So, the 1000 which was there 
uh, as a coefficient of W22 has been brought on to the right hand side. So, we have this first equation for W22 k plus 1 and then when you come to the second equation this involves W22 we have already evaluated this at uh, k plus 1 iteration. So, we make use of this and 4 2 is not known at k plus 1 level it is known at the kth level or kth iteration. So, we substitute that and we substitute again the old value of W33 and then estimate the new value of W32 and then we come to 4 2 here 3 2 is known. So, we have k plus 1 4 3 is not known we have k 2 3 has W22 which is at k plus 1 and W24 and 3 3 are at k otherwise the coefficients remain uh, the same. So, it is just rewriting of the equations in such a way that the, the term with the largest coefficient in magnitude ok. In this case it happens to be the diagonal uh, uh, value ok. So, that particular thing is kept brought to the left hand side and all the others are taken to the right hand side and if their value is known at k plus 1th level time step or iteration step then we use that otherwise we make use of the old iteration value that is k value like this. So, when you come to this 4 3 k plus 1 here 3 3 is already computed here. So, we make use of the latest value 4 2 is already computed here. So, we make use of the latest value 4 4 is coming down further. So, it is not known at the current k plus 1 iteration we make use of the old value. So, in this way we make a sequential evaluation of all the variables in this case we have 9 variables if you have 9000 grid points we will have 9000 equations like this and we go through all the 9000 equations at k plus 1th iteration level before we move on to the next one. So, that is the I Gauss-Seidel method is that we start with initial guesses k equal to 0 for all the variables and then we update each variable one by one in a sequential way like this and once we update all the variables we go to the next iteration level. So, that is how the gauss seidel method is supposed to work and this is the way that uh, these are the values that we have got uh, as a function of iteration number. So, iteration number of 0 corresponds to initial guess. So, this is all of these are with an initial guess of 0 it can be anything. So, we started with some initial guess and then we updated this first and then this and then this and then this 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 like this we updated all the values using the formulas that we have derived by rewriting a w b uh, equal a w equal to b form and then once we evaluate all these things then we come to the next iteration level we reevaluate this reevaluate this reevaluate all these things and we can see that we take any value it started with 0 1 1.67 2.17 2.46 it's the incremental value is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and then you can see that at the end of 14 iterations it's come down to 2.7713 so the increment is only 0.0002 and this one is also increment is in the last decimal place here in the fifth fourth decimal place here and here like this. And if we if we increase the if we go further and further we will see that even the fourth decimal place will not change the fifth decimal place will change. So, depending on what accuracy of solution you want you can stop after so many number of iterations. And so, this is how the gauss seidel method works you start with uh, you rewrite your original set of a w equal to b uh, uh, equations which you got by discretizing the partial differential equation using finite difference approximations and you check whether the coefficient matrix a satisfies the either the weak form or the strong form the diagonal dominance and if it does satisfy then you can make use of the gauss seidel method and rewrite the equations in this k plus 1 and k form uh, in a particular way which we will discuss uh, in uh, uh, later uh, classes. And once you have these formulas then it is just a sequential iteration of this with any initial guess 
it need not be the same for all the variables, but it does not matter what they are, eventually they will converge. There is a guarantee of convergence provided the equations are linear and they are irreducible and they satisfy the weak form of diagonal dominance. So, in such a case we can uh, uh, make use of the gauss seidel method and get a solution like this. And you can see it is converging to some value and the values are not the same in all the cases. There are some which are smaller and some which are higher. The highest value is 4.1 and the smallest value that we have got is 2.77. And uh, how is this correct? 4.11 is for W33 and W33 happens to be uh, happens to be the W33 happens to be the uh, value which is right at the center of the domain which is farthest from all the walls. So, it will have the highest value and uh, that kind of uh, uh, logic is followed. W23 and W43 are symmetric and you can see that they have very similar values 3.6284, 3.6285. If you take it to convergence they both will be the same and similarly there is symmetry between 4.2 and 2.4 again between 3.2 and 3.4. So, we could have made use of symmetry, but for the illustration we are showing that you have a certain variation of velocity which is consistent with our understanding or expectation that as you move further and further away from the walls the velocity <coughs> will be higher and that is what we are getting. In ideal case having 9 unknowns here is not going to give us a lot of accuracy because this is a, a very gross error and uh, if we were to calculate the average velocity from uh, by taking the average of all these things then it may not match with the expected value because the number of grid points is very small here. So, if you make it instead of 5 by 5 if you make it uh, 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 or 50 by 50 then you will see that the solution that you get uh, will be converging. So, that is further increase of a grid points will not make any difference and at that point you can say that you have got the uh, correct solution. Okay. So, this is the essence of the CFD approach and the CFD approach is that you start with the equations which describe mathematically the flow and in this particular case we have that as dou square w by dou x square plus dou square w by dou y square equal to constant. So, that is a partial differential equation the solution of which we are seeking and we do not get a value at any x and y we get a value at specified values of x and y these are known as the grid points. So, wherever you want to have a solution there you discretize the governing equation by substituting difference formulas for the derivatives. So, the derivative is expressed in terms of values of the variable at discrete points and that will give you uh, a set of algebraic equations and this set of algebraic equations together are determinate and uh, uh, you can solve them by using a number of methods and what we have seen uh, for the purpose of illustration is a special method which is often used in CFD which is the gauss seidel method and we can see that using this method we can uh, get a solution using elementary mathematics in order to get this solution we did not have to use any special mathematics it is just simple finite difference approximations and solution of algebraic equations and that is the advantage of CFD and we can use this same principle for even more complicated equations. So, that is uh, uh, and that is what enables us to use this CFD approach for the solution of the much more complicated equations which describe uh, fluid flow in any arbitrary geometry, but we are still a long way from it before we get to a discussion of those uh, complications and all that in the next module in the next uh, next week we look at uh, uh, a different way of doing the same thing a different way of converting a partial differential equation 
into a set of algebraic equations. This time in this method we have used finite differences and we will use a finite volume method to do the same thing and end up with uh, again a set of algebraic equations which can again be solved using the gauss seidel method. And the difference between that finite difference and finite volume method uh, we will see in the next lecture and uh, hopefully you will uh, uh, you will uh, you will learn from that that uh, one could tackle even more complicated geometries than this very simple geometry that we have done today.